Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is the final uh, lesson, the review uh, for theory of flight. There are four forces acting on an aircraft in flight, thrust, lift, drag, and weight. Drag can be divided into two uh, divisions, parasite and induced drag. Parasite drag is that drag that's not associated with lift, and it can divide, be divided into form drag, skin friction and interference drag. Induced drag is the drag that is associated with the production of lift. All four forces are in equilibrium and level unaccelerated flight. Lift and parasite drag increase as a square of the velocity, whereas induced drag decreases with velocity. The center of pressure is that vector that all lift is assumed to act through. The center of gravity is the vector that all weight is assumed to act through. Centripetal force is the force that makes the airplane turn. It is the force that provides the acceleration towards the center of the turn. If thrust is greater than drag, so that's excess thrust, the aircraft will uh, be in a steady climb. The load factor is the acceleration in excess of the Earth's gravity. It's the ratio. So if uh, the Acceleration, if your acceleration is twice of the Earth's gravitational acceleration, that, so 9.8 meters per second squared, that is the load factor. It is expressed in D. Dust loads can cause structural failure in extreme cases. Well, we discussed at length uh, about uh, the principles of flight and how a wing produces lift. But in summary, I think all you need to know at this level is that air over the top of the wing is at a higher velocity and lower pressure than it is below the wing. As the angle of attack increases, the pressure distribution moves forward until the point at stall, of stall, at which point it snaps back suddenly. This is what, create, what causes the aircraft nose to drop. The angle of attack is the angle between the wing port and the relative airflow. Wing tip vortices are a byproduct of lift. If you have lift, you're going to have wing tip vortices. The wing plan form is the shape of the wing when looking from the top down onto the wing. The chord is the distance from leading to trailing edge of the wing. The aspect ratio is the span divided by a chord. So a wing that is very, has a high span, is very, um, has a, a high span and a narrow uh, chord would have a high aspect ratio, so a glider. The camber is the curvature of the wing. A washout is the dissolve fe uh, design feature whereby there is a lower angle of incidence at the tips. And this is designed to maintain roll authority in the stall and make the stall less drastic. Spoilers decrease lift and increase drag and flaps increase lift and increase drag. The lateral axis of an aircraft is controlled by the ailerons. The longitudinal axis controlled by the elevator and the vertical or normal axis is controlled by the rudder. When the aircraft yaws, it will induce a roll. When you are applying ailerons to start a turn, often you can have a phenomenon called adverse yaw, uh, which is caused by aileron drag. So this requires rudder to keep the turn coordinated. There are control balances on control surface to reduce or increase the control forces. A trim device, such as an adjustable trim tab, eliminates control forces in a given position. Lateral stability is about the longitudinal axis. So that is the wing moving uh, left and right. The dihedral and keel effect are design features to increase lateral stability. Longitudinal stability is about the lateral axis or pitch. The horizontal stabilizer, the size of it, is the primary design consideration in uh, designing for longitudinal stability. With an aft center of gravity, you are likely to have worse uh, longitudinal stability, although you may have a lower stall speed and a higher cruise speed or a higher top speed. The vertical stabilizer is uh, designed to provide directional stability. That is stability about the vertical axis. An aircraft may be designed to be stable, but become unstable with an aft center of gravity. This is called inherent stability. Propeller efficiency is the ratio of the actual pitch to the theoretical pitch. A variable pitch propeller changes pitch using hydraulics or electrics. There are four phenomena that cause the aircraft to yaw to the left that are attributed to the propeller. The first is torque. 
because the propeller spins clockwise, the plane wants to spin counterclockwise or go to the left. Strip slipstream is caused by the corkscrew air pattern from the propeller, hits the left side of the vertical stabilizer, pushing the nose to the left. Gyroscopic effect in tail draggers is caused by gyroscopic precession. When raising the nose on takeoff, the aircraft wants to yaw to the left. Asymmetric thrust or P-factor is caused by the downgoing propeller blade, the right side and clockwise turning propellers. It has a higher angle of attack than the upgoing blade in a climb. All of these yaw-inducing phenomena require you to apply right rudder, especially in the climb. That concludes our lesson uh, or our review of Theory of Flight. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you in the uh, next subject.